Welcome to another class of process heat transfer. In the contents of uh, this lecture, I will mainly talk about the introduction of heat exchangers, followed by the classification of heat exchangers. In the further classification of heat exchanger, I will talk about the recuperation and the regeneration heat exchangers and the transfer processes, the geometry of construction, the heat uh, transfer mechanisms the flow arrangements and the heat exchangers and then I'll talk about the general guidelines for the selection of heat exchangers. In the next topic I will talk about the heat exchanger analysis. Uh, in the heat exchanger analysis I will uh, discuss in detail about the LMTD method of heat exchanger analysis and uh, effectiveness method, effectiveness NTU method and further I will talk about the pressure drop in the heat exchangers. So heat exchangers are made up of uh, different geometries. So I will mainly discuss about the pressure drops in pipes and um, other geometries of the heat exchangers. And at the end I will talk about the fouling in the heat exchangers and the mechanism from which we can pre prevent the, uh, the fouling process in the heat exchangers. Now, the first is the heat exchangers and the classifications. So let's talk about the heat transfer equipment. It is simply an equipment that permits the efficient transfer of heat from a hotter fluid to the colder fluid. So this may be with and without the direct contact of the fluids and this equipment is actually known as the heat exchanger. So heat is always transferred uh, from the high temperature to the low temperature. So this heat transfer can be occurred uh, directly by contacting the fluid or indirect contact of the fluid. So the equipment which involves this transfer of heat is known as the heat exchanger. So further, the definition of the heat exchanger is the heat exchanger is a device that is used to transfer the thermal energy between two or more fluids or between a solid surface and a fluid or between the solid particulates and a fluid at different temperatures and in thermal contact. So the heat is always uh, transfer from one fluid or from one body to another body or one fluid to another fluid uh, because of the temperature difference. So keep in mind that in the heat exchanger analysis that we will study in the upcoming slides that there must be a temperature difference in order to transfer the heat from one body to another body. Now let's discuss about the applications of the heat exchangers. There are vast applications of the heat exchangers. So the typical applications involve the heating or the cooling of a fluid stream of concern and the evaporation or the condensation of single or the multi-component fluid stream. So we, we have observed that uh, while in case of evaporation or the condensation, the heat is always transferred. So the evaporation or the condensation may occur in a certain equipment that is known as the heat exchanger. In other applications, the objective may be to recover or to reject heat or to sterilize or sometimes pasteurize or fractionate or distillation or the concentration or the crystallization or the control of a process fluid may be required. So the objective every time may differ right so it could be any objective that we are fulfilling using a particular heat exchanger so the common examples of the heat exchangers are the shell and tube heat exchangers and it also includes the automobile radiators and condenser and evaporators and air preheaters and the most important one that is being used in the industry that is called the cooling towers so we will mainly focus on the design of the shell and tube heat exchanger and we will emphasize and we'll study in detail about the thermal design of the heat exchangers. Before going to this topic that is our main topic uh, the shell and tube heat exchanger we will mainly study the applications 
and the heat exchanger analysis and the pressure drop and the fouling mechanisms and the fouling how to overcome the fouling in the heat exchangers we will mainly discuss then uh, the double pipe heat exchanger and then we will study the shell and tube heat exchanger that is the main topic of concern in this uh, subject so further there could be the internal th thermal energy sources in the exchangers such as the electric heaters or the nuclear fuel element that is being used to provide the energy in order to convert the phase of one liquid into another phase let's suppose if we have a heat exchanger and the heating element is the electric heater and we have a liquid and we we want to convert that liquid into the vapor phase so the energy that can the energy source that can be utilized to convert the water into vapors that can be electric heaters so combustion and the chemical reaction may take place within the exchanger such as boilers fire heaters and the fluidized bed exchangers so in the boilers we we sometimes uh, uh, provide a different uh, combustion processes so combustion actually generate a lot of a um, lot of um, lot of heat and that heat basically utilized to convert the water in the boiler to convert it into the steam so mechanical devices may be used in some exchangers such as in uh, scrap surface exchangers or the agitated vessels and the stirred tank reactors the applications of uh, heat exchangers uh, include uh, in the chemical and the petrochemical plants and we have seen that the air conditioning system also requires uh, the heat exchangers so the other applications include the power production the waste re heat recovery and the automobile radiators and the central heating system that is being used in different buildings and the electronic parts uh, also requires the heat exchanger in order to cool down to keep it at an optimum temperature so this is a tree that shows the applications of different heat exchangers uh, in different applications as you can see that the 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 heat exchangers um, are applied at uh, for the cooling towers and for the air conditioners and it has many applications in the environmental engineering right and the cooling of the aircraft and the oil cooling and transportation so this is a big tree and the branches of this tree shows that there are many applications of heat exchangers now let's discuss about the different terminologies of the heat transfer equipments we will see uh, some kind of uh, he, uh, heat transfer equipments in our upcoming lectures first of all the heat exchanger so the both sides have the single phase it could be either the vapor phase or the liquid phase and the process streams so the cooler which is cooler uh, the cooler is known as the one stream as the process fluid and the other cooling water or the air so the heater can be defined as the one stream a process fluid and which has further applications and the other a hot utility such as the uh, stream the hot stream and the hot oil so the condenser may be the one stream as the condensing vapor that is our uh, required stream that we want to convert it into the vapors and condensing vapors and the other may be the cooling water or the air so so in in every uh, heat exchanger uh, or the heat transfer equipment there are mainly two streams right the one is the process fluid and the other is the utility stream right so the heat is basically exchanged between these two streams right so our main concern is let's suppose is the process stream if the process stream is the hot fluid and we want to cut we want to decrease the temperature of the process stream so we will use an a, a utility stream uh, that that has uh, a temperature which will take the heat from the process stream and cool down 
so the heat will be transferred between the process stream and the utility stream so the next is the chiller one stream a process is uh, fluid a uh, process fluid being condensed at sub atmospheric temperatures while the other a boiling refrigerant or a process stream so the reboiler uh, what is a reboiler so the one stream a bottoms stream from the distillation column and the other stream is known as the hot utility or the steam or the hot oil or the process stream this is all about the different heat transfer equipments so we will mainly focus on the heat exchangers and we will also see the application in the design of the other equipments but we will mainly focus on the heat exchanger design uh, basically the thermal design uh, classifications of heat exchanger so first of all uh, i will discuss about the classification which is the recuperation and the regeneration heat exchangers so these are the two main types of heat exchangers that exist and they differ in using the intermediate storage or the direct heat transfer so the basic difference is the one is basically transferring the heat between the two fluids and the second uh, uh, classification uh, known as uh, there is one equipment and it takes the heat from the hot fluid and store it in the heat transfer equipment and then transfer it to another fluid and we will see the examples that the difference between the recuperation and the regeneration heat exchangers so let's have a look on the basic definitions that the recuperators so in a recuperators both media such as the hot fluid and the cold fluid are separated by a wall through which the heat is transferred directly so there is no direct contact in the recuperator type of heat exchanger so the two medias the one is the hot fluid and the cold fluid the second is the cold fluid the heat is being transferred between these two fluids from the hot fluid towards the cold fluid through the wall which separates these two fluids i will see show you the examples in the coming slide so the second one is the regenerator so it is a kind of heat exchanger that in a regenerator heat from the primary medium is first stored in a thermal mass and later on in the next cycle and this heat is being regenerated from the mass by the secondary medium so what does it mean that we have a particular heat exchanger so so that one equipment is being divided into two sections right so half section is being utilized to take the heat from the hot fluid and then that uh, the, the the that section will move on to another section and the heat will being regenerated by the cold fluid so i will also show you the examples related to the regenerator so the thermal mass can be a wall material of a flow ducts or a porous medium through which alternating primary and secondary flow is led let me just show you in the upcoming slide the examples of the recuperators so this is the basic uh, 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 example of the recuperators so we have the a tube and this tube has uh, a partition in it so in this compartment there is a there is a hot fluid here is the cold fluid so the heat is being transferred from the hot towards the cold fluid so so the direction of the hot fluid and the cold fluid are in opposite direction so uh, another example is the transmural heat transfer so the heat transfer through the wall that fluids not in contact with each other let's say so uh, these are the two concentric tubes right so this is the inner tube and this is the outer tube right so the hot fluid which is represented by b is being uh, uh, moving in the left direction right so so it is a hot fluid so uh, the cold fluid which is named as a is moving in the right direction or and it is in the outer tube so there will be the temperature gradient between the inner fluid and the outer fluid so heat will be transferred from the inner fluid towards the outer fluid or from the inner tube 
to the you know, outer tube because of the temperature gradient so here is another example that um, the single phase or the two phase flow right for example so we have a, a tube which is being separated or a duct which is being separated by the wall and the hot fluid is a liquid and maybe the cold fluid is a gas right so uh, in the evaporation right so the hot fluid uh, uh, in the one section there is a hot fluid and in the second section we have a liquid but this liquid takes the heat from the hot fluid and uh, changes into the vapors so this 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 phenomena is known as the evaporation process so similar is not uh, is the condensation process for example this is a kind of tube or a duct which is separated by the wall right so here there are two fluid fluid a and fluid b right fluid a is at the higher temperature and the fluid b is at the lower temperature so the fluid and uh, the heat is being transferred from the high temperature fluid to the low temperature fluid so when the heat is being transferred from the high temperature to the low temperature fluid so so uh, the the vapors the vapors which are coming from uh, in, in this area in, in the form of a fluid will condense and will form a liquid and this process is known as the condensation process so this is the example of the regenerator so so we have this kind of equipment right stationary plate regenerative air preheater right so this is uh, the inner mass or the rotating geometry of this heat exchanger right so this is moving in a in a particular direction either in the clockwise or the anti clockwise direction right so these inner structure may be the grooved plates or the plain plates or the corrugated plates right so what will happen so this whole assembly or the whole equipment has been divided into two into two compartments right the one is the right compartment the second is the left compartment right so for example so the hot air is being coming in this direction and will move from top to bottom in the right section right so the hot air is moving from top to bottom in the right direction when the hot air moves through this inner inner materials or the inner parts so the heat is being stored in the inner sections of this heat exchanger right and this is this is a kind of continuous process when this this inner assembly uh, rotates in a clockwise or the anti clockwise direction right so when this heated area will become here after some rotations so what is going to happen so it will become in the left hand compartment left hand side of this heat exchanger uh, then in the left hand side of the compartment so the cold air is being moving from bottom towards the top so what is going to happen the 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 cold air which is um, moving up from the bottom will go through the inner geometry or the inner structure of the heat exchanger will take the stored heat from this exchanger and will move up uh, in the form of hot air so here in the in the right hand side compartment this is the inlet of the hot air and here there there will be some uh, less temperature of the hot air because the heat is being transferred to the equipment so on the on the left hand side so this is the cold air which has the less temperature when it is it is it is moving or go through the the heat exchanger or the regenerator it will take the heat from the from the inner structure or the inner geometry and will come out in the form of hot air which will have slightly higher temperature as compared to the inlet so this is this is an example of uh, the regenerator heat exchanger regenerative heat exchanger the next classification of heat exchanger is based on the transfer processes so in this classification so there are two types of heat exchanger the first one is known as the direct contact type heat exchangers right and the second one is known as the indirect contact type heat exchangers so let's first talk about the first category which is the direct contact heat exchanger so it is a type of heat exchanger in which both hot and cold fluids uh, comes in contact with each other there is no solid boundary 
in between these two fluids these two fluids comes in contact with each other because uh, and there will be the simultaneous heat and the mass transfers right so the simple examples of the direct contact heat exchangers include the spray towers or that or the spray and the tray condensers and the cooling towers uh, the cooling towers uh, you all may know about uh, the best example of the direct contact heat exchangers the second category which is known as the indirect contact heat exchangers which is also known as the transmural heat exchange heat transfer equipments so the classified examples include the double pipe heat exchangers and the shell and tube heat exchangers in this type of heat exchangers the the two fluids the hot and the cold fluids are separated by a specific boundary or the spe specific wall so there is no direct contact so the two fluids are separated by a real boundary so this type of heat exchanger is called the indirect contact type heat exchangers another classification of the heat exchanger is based on the geometry of construction so we will mainly focus on the indirect transfer type heat exchangers in the upcoming slide right which include the double pipe and the shell and tube heat exchangers so let's have a look on the description on the heat exchangers which are classified based on the geometry of construction so indirect transfer type heat exchangers are often described in terms of their construction features right the major construction types are the tubular heat exchangers and the plate and frame type heat exchangers and the extended surface heat exchangers so there are three main classes uh, which includes the tubular type in the plate and frame and the extended surfaces heat exchangers let's have a look on the tubular type heat exchangers so let's have a look on the description the tubular heat exchangers are built of circular tubes so the one fluid flows inside the tubes and the other flows on outside of the tubes so the tube diameters and the number of tubes and the tube length and the pitch of the tubes and the tube arrangements can be changed so there are multiple parameters which affect the heat transfer and the heat transfer rate so we will see these parameters uh, while we see the design of the tubular heat exchangers so the diameter of the tubes right the length of the tubes and the number of the tubes and the pitch of the tubes and the tube arrangement so these are the parameters which mainly affect on the heat transfer rate we'll see the effect of these parameters on the heat transfer rate in the upcoming slide so therefore there is considerable flexibility in their design so if we talk about the tubular heat exchangers they are further classified into further three categories the first is known as the double pipe heat exchangers and the shell and tube heat exchangers and the spiral tube type heat exchangers so this is lecture 5 i will talk about uh, double pipe heat exchanger and its thermal design and its applications in the lecture number 6 and in lecture number 7 i will mainly talk about the shell and tube heat exchanger its applications its design considerations and its thermal and mechanical design i will talk about in lecture number 7 so the next category is known as the shell and tube heat exchanger which is the most important one and widely employed in the industry uh, for the heat exchange phenomena so the shell and tube heat exchangers are built of round tubes mounted on a large cylindrical shell with the tube axis parallel to that of the shell so the axis of the tube and the shell which is mounted on the tubes are in the same direction or in the same axis they are widely used as oil coolers and power condensers preheaters in the power plants and the steam generators in the nuclear power plants and in process applications as well as in the chemical industries so the main design objectives here to accommodate the thermal expansion and to furnish the ease of cleaving and or to provide the least expensive construction if other features are of no importance so these are the three main the main parameters or the main features that we need to focus that 
so when you use a particular heat exchanger there might be the thermal expansion of that heat exchanger equipment because of uh, the heat involved in, in, in that process so there might be some fouling phenomena fouling I will I will have a separate topic about the fouling of the heat exchangers what is the fouling what are the mechanisms of the fouling and how to overcome the fouling and how to clean the heat exchanger I will talk about in a separate topic about the fouling and the cleaning so so the least expensive uh, uh, construction of the heat exchanger uh, is basically the required feature in order to in order to uh, take into account the economical considerations that we basically use while pla while planning a particular industry and if we use a particular heat exchanger we need to uh, take into account the economical considerations as well so this is a basic construction of shell and tube heat exchangers as you can see that in in this shell and tube heat exchangers so these are tubes one two three four five and six these are horizontal tubes right and this is a shell which is mounted on this tube bundles right so inside the shell and tube heat exchanger there are tubes which are placed horizontally and there is a shell which is mounted on these horizontal tubes right so the tubes has the right side openings and the left side openings right right side openings and the left side opening so the one fluid which moves through the fluid uh, through the tubes and the one fluid which moves in the shell side so there are two fluids one is the colder fluid and one is the hot fluid right so uh, this is the indirect contact type heat exchanger so these two fluids do not contact with each other so the one fluid uh, passes through the tubes and the one fluid which passes through the shell outside the tubes right let me just show you the construction so for example uh, in this uh, heat exchanger shell and tube heat exchanger we are trying to cool down the vapors into the condens condensate by using uh, some sort of coolant right or the cool cold water so here we have the vapors inlet right at this point these are vapors right and when the this is the inlet of the shell side right vapors will enter th in, at this point uh, into the shell side and the vapors will move uh, all over the shell shell side uh, outside of the tubes right and it will exchange the heat the vapors will exchange the heat with the with the colder fluid so the co <coughs> sorry so the colder flu fluids is inside the tube so here is the inlet of the coolant so uh, the coolant comes here at this inlet and will move inside the tube right so you can see that the coolant is moving inside the tube and the and the hot vapors are moving outside the tube in the shell right so so there will be the heat transfer phenomena so the some vapors will condense and will will change the phase and will become in the phase of liquid and will come out at the bottom in the form of condensate outlet there there might be some non condensable gases and those non condensable gases will not be converted into liquid form so there there must be a vent gas outlet for for this this outlet is useful to vent out or to remove uh, those non condensable gases so i have also explained about the presence of non condensable gases while in case of condensation process in the previous lecture you can go through it so this is a shell and these are the tubes right so there are some baffles right so baffles uh, this is not a, a, a three dimensional clear pictures so there are some baffles inside the shell side inside the shell which basically uh, uh, has two two purposes the one is the baffle is uh, the the first purpose of the baffles are uh, is to hold the tubes inside the shell 
and the second is to direct the flow in different directions so for example the vapors are coming here and the 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 presence of the baffles will direct the flow of vapors in this way uh, as my cursor is moving right in zigzag manner right and ultimately it will come out over here so the presence of um, the baffle has two two purposes the one is to hold the shell sides uh, or the so to hold the tubes inside the shell and the second is to direct the flow in a zigzag manner so there are multiple uh, multiple other parameters or multiple other uh, features of the shell and tube heat exchanger i will explain in the upcoming slide as well so the 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 head side there is one head side and there is the front head and there is front uh, one the <coughs> rear head so there are different classes of the head types the front head and the rear head i will uh, come up with this uh, uh, classification of heat exchangers and based on the flow type and based on the construction type in the upcoming lecture so this is this is the basic phenomena or the basic uh, construction of the shell and tube heat exchangers so the shell and tube heat exchangers are further classified into numerous categories and i will come up with the structures with their uh, with their geometries in the upcoming slide so this is a more clear picture which will show you the presence of baffle right so let's say this is a shell side set so the uh, the fluid which comes over here and it will come here uh, please follow the path of my cursor the fluid will come here and it will move over here in a zigzag manner right and uh, in a zigzag manner and ultimately it will move out of the shell so these are the baffles right single pass or the baffled uh, single pass shell so i will also explain the single pass and the double pass and the and the youtube uh, heat exchanger so uh, single pass or the two pass uh, i will explain it uh, in the upcoming upcoming lecture here is another youtube heat exchanger so in this kind of heat exchanger the the tubes are present in the form of u shaped tubes right so so this is named as a u tube which means that the tubes are present in the shape of u right baffled it means that there are some baffles present inside the shell single pass shell so the fluid which passes through the shell in 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 only one pass right so the fluid comes here and passes through the shell and will move out from here right so this is the inlet of the tubes so so this is the head so head is basically is divided into two compartments this is the inlet compartment the fluid comes here and this fluid um, uh, goes inside the tube and then complete the whole path from here to here and will come here and will move out so the heat exchangers uh, are mainly classified as uh the front head and the rear head so this is our main shell so so the heat exchangers may be classified as pull through floating head heat exchangers so this is a stationary head right and this is the rear head end right so heat exchangers are also classified as based on the stationary head or moving head and some other classifications are present uh, and i will show you a complete description of uh, uh, the different heat exchangers based on the uh, the head front head and the rear heads so the types of the heat exchangers that we have studied about um, uh, that we can we will study about the plate and frame heat exchangers and the spiral plate heat exchangers and the extended surfaces heat exchangers so what does it mean the extended surfaces heat exchangers surface heat exchanger so we have a heat exchanger and the heat exchanger has some extended surfaces on um, its outer surface that will help to increase the heat transfer rate so uh, the extended surface heat exchanger has the similar uh, kind of example when you see the engine of a motor bike you will see a vertical vertical extended surfaces on the engine of the motor bike this is uh, the simplified example of the extended surface heat exchangers so 
The next is uh, the classification of heat exchanger based on the heat transfer mechanism. So the heat exchanger equipment can also be classified on uh, the heat transfer mechanism. So I, ha I had already explained this classification in the previous slide. So let's have a look once again. So the single phase convection on both sides. And the second category is known as the single phase convection on one side and the two phase convection on the other side. So the third category is the two phase con convection on both sides. So uh, there, there might be, let's, let's take an example in the second case, the single phase convection in one side, it means that um, there might be the hot fluid on one side, right? And the two phase convection on the other side, and then there might be the two, two phases uh, which are present on the other side, for example, in case of evaporations. So if we have the heat exchanger in one compartment, there is a hot fluid and in the second compartment, there are two phases, the liquid phase and the vapor phase. So this is a classified example of the single phase convection on one side and the two phase convection on the other side. So the last category, um, I hope, and is known as the classification of heat exchanger based on the flow arrangements. So the heat exchangers may be classified according to the fluid flow path through the heat exchanger. So three basic flow configurations are the parallel flow and the counter flow and the cross flow, cross flow heat exchangers. Let's have a look on the geometries. So the first one is the parallel flow heat exchangers. Consider this is a double pipe heat exchanger. Why we say it is a double pipe heat exchanger? There is the inner, inner pipe and there is the outer pipe, right? So one fluid is moving inside the pipe, inside the inner pipe and the second fluid is moving in the outer pipe. So there is no direct contact between these two fluids and the both of the fluids are moving in the same direction. So this is known as the parallel flow heat exchangers, right? And in the second category in which we, we say that <coughs> Uh, the double pipe heat exchanger, uh, the one fluid is moving in the right side and then the second fluid is moving on the left hand side. So this is known as the counter flow heat exchangers, right? And the third and the last category is known as the cross flow heat exchangers. So as you can see that th this is uh, a heat, heat exchanger, the hot fluid is moving in in this direction and the cold fluid is moving in this direction, right? So as you can see that the, the flow directions of these two fluid has the 90 degree angle. So we can say that this is the kind of heat exchanger which is known as the cross flow uh, heat exchanger. So the most common applications, the most common heat exchangers are the two fluid heat exchangers. So three phase fluid heat exchangers are widely used in, in cryogenesis, cryogenics. So the energy can be saved by the direct contact condensations by the direct contact condensation of a vapor in a liquid of the same substance under high pressure thermal energy can be stored in the same tank if the fluids are different so so you can you can use um, the another technique or uh, the indirect contact of the condensation if the vapors and the liquid are uh, are in the same having the same uh, chemical composition so the direct contact condensation of the vapor and liquid can be can be proceeded when the energy is needed again the liquid is depressurized and the flashing occurs which results in the production of vapors so the vapors can be used for the heating or as a working fluid for an engine so this is a particular example of the heat exchanger in which the condensation is taking place so so when you when you need to condense a particular vapor so you need you use the liquid of the similar composition of the same composition as the vapors has so ultimately you can reutilize the same condensate in order to convert it into the vapors by simply depressurizing the liquid so the next topic is the selection of the heat exchangers. So there are various criteria. So in order to select a particular heat exchanger for a particular application. So the heat exchangers must specify the process specifications. It must continue to the next scheduled shutdown of the plant for maintenance. So the heat exchanger must withstand the severe conditions of the plant environment such as the high temperature and the high pressure environments and it must also resist the corrosion by the process and the service streams as well as the environment. The heat exchanger should also resist fouling. So the fouling is a phenomena through which a dirt is being collected inside 
or at the inner tubes of the heat exchanger or at the inner walls of the heat exchanger so this may be due to the presence of dirt this may be due to the condensation of some materials uh, in the heat exchanger and this may be uh, because of some corrosion or uh, due to the presence of corrosive liquid inside the heat exchanger so we have to select a particular type of heat exchanger which which has the capacity and which has the capacity to minimize its uh, fouling or to resist the fouling inside the heat exchanger so the exchanger must be maintainable which usually implies choosing a configuration that permits the cleaning and the replacement of any components that may be especially vulnerable to corrosion erosion or the vibration this requirement will dictate the positioning of the exchanger and the space requirement around it so this is another uh, important aspect when you decide a particular heat exchanger or you place a particular heat exchanger at a particular location in the industry so whenever there is uh, the cleaning uh, required so uh, or you need to replace uh, some part of uh, the heat exchanger so there must be the enough space around the heat exchanger so can you so that you can easily open that a particular heat exchanger or you can easily remove that particular heat exchanger so it should be it should it should have enough space around the heat exchanger so you can perform these um, uh, work either cleaning or the replacement of any major component in the heat exchanger so it should not be in that con in that particular congested area where you cannot perform these actions so keep in mind that when you design a particular heat exchanger so keep in mind that its cleaning must be easy right so for example if you design a particular heat exchanger and it, it's it has a very simple design so it requires only one day or two day uh, for its cleaning if you design a, a complex geometry of a particular heat exchanger it requires uh, uh, at least one one month or two months for its cleaning purpose so so the longer period for its cleaning will, would not be viable for the industry in terms of its economics so the next is the heat exchanger should be cost effective uh, the installed operating and the maintaining cost include the loss of production due to the exchanger and availability so must be calculated and the exchanger should cost as little as possible so keep in mind that the economical considerations are very important because ultimately it will affect the production capacity and ultimately it will affect the revenue of that particular industry there may be uh, limitations on the heat exchanger diameter length weight and the tube configurations due to its uh, site requirements so lifting and the service capabilities or inventory considerations so th there are multiple parameters that you need to consider before selecting a particular heat exchangers so if you need a heat exchanger um, uh, at the ground floor if you need a heat exchanger at the 10th floor and in, in that particular industry so there might be uh, different requirements based on the weight based on the length diameter of the heat exchanger so for example if you need a particular heat exchanger and it is very it has very high weight and you can use it at the ground floor and if you need a similar kind of heat exchanger at the 10th 10th floor so it is very heavy and you don't have any any lifting equipment so how can you carry the, that particular heavy heat exchanger from ground floor to the 10th floor so without having any any lifting equipment so keep in mind that there are multiple parameters that you need to consider before selecting a particular heat exchanger and in a particular industry and at a particular place so in the selection of the heat exchanger the heat transfer enhancement in the heat exchanger is usually accompanied by the increased pressure drop and the higher pumping power therefore any gain from the enhancement in the heat transfer should be weighed against the cost of the accompanying pressure drop also some thought should be given to which fluid should pass through the tube side and which through the shell side so this is the most important question that uh, the selection of the fluid by either uh, particularly in the tube side or in the shell side usually the more viscous fluid is more suitable for the shell side larger passage because of the larger passage area and the low pressure drop and the fluid with the higher pressure must go through the tube side 
So the engineer in the industry often find themselves in a position to select the heat exchanger to accomplish a certain heat transfer task. Usually the goal is to heat or cool a certain fluid at a non-mass flow rate and the temperature to a desired temperature. Thus the rate of heat transfer in this uh, pros prospective heat exchanger is given by this expression as Q max is equal to M m dot is the mass flow rate cp is the heat capacity t in is the inlet temperature t out is the outlet temperature this expression gives us that the heat transfer requirement of the heat exchanger before having any idea about the heat heat exchanger itself so any any engineer going through the catalogs of the heat exchanger manufacturers will be overwhelmed by the type and the number of readily available uh, heat exchangers the proper selection of the heat exchanger depends upon the many factors and the first one is the heat transfer rate. This is the most important quantity in the selection of the heat exchanger as the heat exchanger should be capable of, of transferring heat at a specified rate. In order to achieve the desired temperature change of the fluid at the specified mass flow rate. The next parameter for the selection of a particular heat exchanger is the cost. So the budgetary limitation usually play an important role in the selection of the heat exchanger except for some specialized cases where uh, the money is no object. An off the shelf heat exchanger has a definite cost advantage over those made to do made at particular order. However, in some cases none of the existing heat exchanger will do or and it may be necessary to undertake the expensive and the time consuming task of designing and manufacturing a particular heat exchanger from scratch. So in order to fulfill the needs of a particular operation, this is often the case that when the heat exchanger is an integral part of the overall device that or the overall product that you need to manufacture. The operation and the maintenance cost of the heat exchanger are also important consideration in assessing the overall cost of a particular heat exchanger. The next important consideration of the selection of the heat exchanger is the pumping power. In a heat exchanger both, both fluids are usually forced to flow by pumps or fans that consumes some electrical energy or the electrical power. The annual cost of electricity associated with the operation of the pumps and the fans can be determined by using this formula. So the total pumping power and the number of hours of the operation and the price of electric electricity after multiplying it we will get the operating cost of um, that particular pump. So minimizing the pressure drop and the mass flow rate of the fluids will minimize the operating cost of the heat exchanger but it will maximize the size of the heat exchanger and its initial cost. As a rule of thumb doubling the mass flow rate will reduce the initial cost by half but will increase the pumping power requirements by a factor of roughly eight so you need to keep in mind that and you need you have to trade off between the flow rate and uh, the size and the cost typically fluid velocities encountered in the heat exchangers ranges from uh, 0.7 meter per second to 7 meter per second for the fluids and between 3 to 30 meter per second for the gases. So low velocities are helpful in avoiding the erosion, tube vibration and the noise as well as the pressure drop in the heat exchangers. So let's talk about the next parameter size and the weight. Normally the smaller and the lighter the heat exchanger the better it is. This is especially the case in the automotive and the aerospace industries where the size and the weight requirements are the most important. Also, the larger heat exchanger normally carries a higher price tag. The space available for the heat exchanger in some cases limits the length of the tubes that can be used for that particular heat exchanger. The next category is the heat exchanger type. The type of the heat exchanger to be selected depends primarily on the type of fluids involved and the size and the weight limitations and the presence of any phase change process during the heat exchange process. For example, a heat exchanger is suitable to cool a liquid by a gas if the surface area on the gas side is many times that of the liquid side. 
on the other hand a plate or a shell and tube heat exchanger is very suitable for cooling a liquid by another liquid another classification or the criteria for the selection of the heat exchanger is the material of construction the material used in the construction of the heat exchanger may be an important consideration in the selection of heat exchanger for example the thermal and the structural stress effects needs to be considered at the pressure below 15 atm or the temperature below 150 degree centigrade but these effects are major considerations um, when the pressure is above 7 atm or the temperature is 550 degree centigrade so the serious limit seriously the limit that accept, acceptable materials of the heat exchanger must be selected a temperature difference of 50 degree centigrade or more between the tube side fluid and the cell side fluid will probably pose the differential thermal expansion problems and need to be considered while designing a particular heat exchanger. In case of you have a corrosive fluid either on the shell side or the tube side, we may have to select the expensive corrosion resistant material such as stainless steel or even titanium if we are not willing to replace the low cost heat exchanger frequently. So there are some other considerations uh, in the selection of heat exchanger that may or may not be important depending upon the applications. For example, being leak tight in is an important consideration when toxic or the expensive fluids are involved. So the ease of servicing and the low maintenance cost and the safety and reliability are some other important consideration in the selection of the heat exchangers. So the quietness is one of the primary consideration in the selection of the liquid to air heat exchanger used in heating and in air conditioning applications.